we have the perfect first guest to talk about all things censorship, government, big tech. He is the president of Judicial Watch, and he's our good friend, Tom Fitton. Tom, great to have you back on the show today. Hey, John. Hey, Amanda. How are you? Good, good. I, l- I want to start with uh, the Mike Pence discovery today. We should all recognize that what we're talking about now are documents that have classified markings on them. We'll have to find out if they're still classified. But Hillary Clinton, Mike Pence, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, there's a pattern here that documents that appear to be presumed to be classified and need to be secured seem to leave pretty easily in the hands of VIPs. What's your take on this? Well, they're kind of different categories of classified records. There are records out of the White House that the president and the vice president had access to and then kept after their term. Right. And prior Justice Department policy and the court decisions, the Presidential Records Act, the presumption is they could do what they wanted with those records. They could take them, keep them afterwards. No one could second guess their decision making. And of course, they changed the rules to get Trump. And now that's brought in folks like Vice President Biden. Uh, the uh, Vice President Pence, and frankly, every former president and former pre- uh, vice president should be checking with their lawyers uh, to make sure uh, that they understand the new rules that I don't think are appropriate, but those are the new rules. And then there's this other issue for Joe Biden. And, you know, I would argue that he's got some uh, protection as to records that are classified from his time from vice president, his time as vice president, and obviously as president. There's no such protection for Uh, Senate records. And if he has Senate records, as reported, that are classified, that significantly increases his criminal exposure. I don't know what his defense would be. Uh, I guess you could make a defense, uh, but others have gone to jail for less. Yeah, great point. Yeah, uh, Tom, I I will admit that I'm somewhat of a Luddite, but even I am asking the question, why doesn't our government have any type of tracking system for documents? And it seems to me that it would be really easy because I remember back in the early 2000s, the fashion industry of all people started utilizing really cheaply made RFIDs that they put in the tags of clothing for inventory purposes. And it seems that inventory is exactly a part of the problem here. Can we not utilize some type of system like that to keep track of this stuff? Well, you're presuming the system wasn't utilized. Uh, you know, in the case of the president and vice president, I think they probably do have a pretty careful system. So the idea that the president had records he didn't have uh, or a vice president had records no one knew about is laughable. I think in Congress, it's even more uh, detail oriented since the members have less uh, ability to manage and and look at classified records. Uh, But, you know, when you're running into politicians who think they run the show, I, I would suspect those rules and regulations were bypassed. So, you know, the graybeards like Joe Biden, who had been in the Senate forever in a day, no one was afraid to confront him evidently on taking and then uh, leaving with classified records. You know, my guess is there are a lot of senators very angry at Joe Biden now. You know why? Because everyone's going to start asking questions. Well, what about other senators? How do they handle classified records? What goes on in the House? Oh, boy, when they broke, when they threw out the rule book to target Trump, now everyone else is on the block. Uh, it's like these, uh, you know, Stalinist travel, uh, trials of old, where they targeted one uh, group for po- political reasons. Next thing you know, everyone else is being targeted, including, in this case, the prosecutors, the Biden administration. Yeah, absolutely. It has boomeranged in a big way on them, for sure. <clears throat> Another issue that I think is growing, and of course, Judicial Watch has played such an important role in this. I think you have new litigation on this. The dual system of justice, whether Hunter Biden, the FBI and the prosecutors are really doing an honest job investigating allegations that we've now known about for five, six years. Tell us the latest about the litigation you're pursuing, Tom, and how it might shed light on that, those very questions. On the Hunter Biden issues? Yes. Yeah, I, you know, for instance, we want records the State Department has about Hunter Biden. You know, we already know uh, they were worried about what he was doing in Ukraine and in Russia. Not much out of uh, the China side of State Department shop. Where are those records? What about the FBI uh, uh, intervention, for instance, in the effort to protect Hunter Biden and Joe Biden just before the election? We're seeing that out of their Twitter files. Uh, We just filed another lawsuit for those records. And I tell you, um, you walk back to cat on these documents, and I think you're going to see Hunter Biden embroiled in this uh, mishandling classified information 
uh, because, uh, you know, who else had the motive and the opportunity other than Joe Biden uh, to use and look at these records? And you know, I think we're going to find Joe wasn't using them. I think we're going to find someone else. It was. And the most likely culprit is Hunter. Or that's what we have to presume based on the fact he's already under criminal investigation on matters related to his foreign ties. Yeah, great point. Well, and speaking of Joe and Hunter Biden and the fact that they absolutely never discuss business, I wanted to ask you about Biden's new chief of staff. They met, uh, I believe, three times back in 2016, a couple times in February and then again in May. Uh, is there is there something a little fishy there? Well, you know, if the Justice Department uh, is doing its job or Congress wants to do its uh, over on the House, uh, he's going to be asked questions about what he was dealing with and who he was doing, uh, what he was doing with uh, Hunter Biden when he was meeting him. And of course, also alliances behind the censorship effort uh, by the Biden administration targeting Americans over COVID. Uh, so there are lots of reasons to ask questions about uh, the prior activities of the um, supposed new White House chief of staff for Biden, because in many ways he'll be running the government. Uh, especially it's important that we hold him accountable because uh, Biden's evident infirmities uh, that uh, the chief of staff will have an outsized ro role necessarily in our government. Yeah, great, up. <clears throat> great point. He's more important than even most chiefs of staff. Uh, Tom, we had a story today showing the revolving door. More than 200 people have left the intelligence community in senior jobs, gone to senior jobs at Facebook, Twitter, and other big tech companies, Google. Uh, and a lot of them giving up their government pensions before they've earned them because they'd rather go into the big tech sector. It's, they're in the very same departments where censorship is occurring. The revolving door, the comfort level that big tech and the federal government seem to have in censoring opinions that our founding fathers, I think, intended and believe they had protected. How serious a problem is it? And how do we start to peel it back? Well, I think it reflects the bigger issue that there is a whole new job category created both in the government and their mirror images in big tech, uh, that of censor. You have government censors sending material over to big tech companies who took it all in and then censored folks like you, like me, like millions of others of Americans. And so if you're a government official spying on and uh, monitoring the social media of innocent Americans and sending it over to big tech to be censored, you must be thinking, boy, I think I could be paid a lot more money to receive this material than to do the dull work of uh, spying on Americans and getting them censored for the government. And so I think there's that uh, temptation, and I don't blame them for getting more money to do the work they're being paid to do by the American people, which is to censor folks under the guise of policing so-called misinformation and disinformation. Yeah, great point. Yeah. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've just got about a minute left, so I wanted to shift gears to something. Um, over the last 250 years or so, a lot of interesting things have happened on Boston Common. Uh, but most recently, Massachusetts Representative Catherine Clark's daughter uh, has now been charged after a, a scene where they were vandalizing uh, parks and, and statues. And um, it doesn't seem to be anywhere in the mainstream media, though. Yeah, assaulting a police officer, too. Uh, you know, we have these leftists out there who, uh, you know, are attacking property and people. And uh, it's, it's the new in thing, uh, this rising revolutionary class. You know, the, 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 the son or the daughter, I forget, I'm not quite sure what we're supposed to gender this person, forgive me for forgetting, uh, is, is uh, someone needs to be held accountable because they're an adult. And I guess voters are going to ask their own questions about whether or not uh, the apple fell far from the tree in terms of their public policy approaches. Yeah, great, great questions that need to be asked. Hopefully some in Boston will ask him. Tom, it's always an honor to watch the work that Judicial Watch does in fighting for transparency for Americans. We always love having you on the show. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you, John. Thank you, man.